Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant and this is Redefining Yourself. This is a program where we're talking about overcoming narcissist abuse. And so uh, for those of you that are new subscribers, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing and finding something valuable that I have to say concerning your life, uh, concerning your recovery and concerning information, getting information to help you understand what you may have experienced or what you may be experiencing. And so for those of you that are new subscribers, I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for being here. And those of you that have not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, and hit the bell. I come on Tuesday through Friday, which is pre-recorded video. So today is Friday. So I don't know when everyone will get this video because everyone doesn't get it on a Friday. But today is Friday, and so I'm wishing you all a great weekend. This will be my last video until Sunday. Sunday, I will be back on live. And Sunday, I come on live between 8 and 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, West Coast time. So I come on and you can ask me whatever question you would like to ask me concerning narcissist abuse or, you know, even your experience. You want to clarify some things. Um, so uh, I also have a Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. You're welcome to join me on that. Give me a thumbs up. And then I post videos on both channels. Uh, sometimes when I travel, I won't be able to come on live on the Facebook channel, but you are welcome to come to the YouTube channel and I will, or YouTube page, YouTube channel and Facebook page. There we go. And, um, come and listen to me talk and, you know, give you some information. So today um, I'm not going to be long because I do have to get out of the office, um, but today because I have somewhere to go, I have to get on the road. Uh, and so today I wanted to talk about, there was a question that was asked by a young lady that was on um, my YouTube, that, that is on my YouTube channel. And she asked me to talk about the vulnerable uh, narcissist. I think she asked me the question when I was live one time. And of course I was vulnerable, you know, they're not vulnerable, you know, but um, so I decided to go back and, and do some research. Um, and as you know, in the mental health field um, with us as therapists uh, here in the state of Washington, every two years, we have to get 36 um, uh, continuing education um, credits. We have to get training. And then as a trauma professional, I have to maintain, I think, 12 uh, uh, continuing education hours, I think, per year uh, concerning trauma. And so I do like to go and, and look for things concerning trauma. But one thing that I do not find is anything dealing with narcissist abuse. Um, they may talk about domestic violence, but narcissist abuse is not something that you will find readily, readily available. Now people are talking more about it. And so there's not a whole lot of information besides people that are talking about it and, uh, you know, on these sites, on these pages, you know, coaches like ourselves. And so the language is also new. And so, you know, the gaslighting, the, the vulnerable narcissist, which is a subtype, um, you know, but this language is, you know, so when you say vulnerable, you know, most of the therapists are like, well, most people that are tra traumatized are vulnerable, no matter how bad they are. Uh, and so I went back and researched and, and I, I uh, went and researched and it dawned on me, oh, what you're talking about is a covert narcissist that is on the shy side, the more um, hypersensitive uh, quiet type, you know, not all narcissists are, you know, uh, uh, loud and, 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 and overt, you know, and so what they're referring to as a vulnerable narcissist is a covert narcissist. Remember, they still have other personality traits. Uh, some people are just, you know, introverted. Some people are extroverted. Some people are loud. Um, you can tell by how, how quiet I am that, you know, I must obviously be an introvert, you know, but, um, joke, joke. Um, I thought it was funny, but anyway, but so you're dealing with narcissists that are, um, on the shy side, more introverted, quiet type, uh, but don't let that fool you you because they are still narcissists. So they still do things that are narcissistic. They're still not nar narcs. Remember that. And so um, here I went to uh, Site Central and this is the exhausted woman with Christine Hammond. She's a uh, licensed mental health counselor. And uh, this is what she said about it. And then of course, you know, I'll add mine in to kind of explain to you um, what, what finally I had the aha as of what a vulnerable narcissist is. And so what she said was, um, they seem quiet and unobtrusive, a refreshing break from the normal banter of one up manship that frequently dominates an initial conversation. Uh, but then the sly remarks, characteristics of inattentive inattentiveness begins along with victimization mentality where the whole world is out to get them. Uh, they, they, so these narcissists are ones that are forever the victim. All of them are forever the victim, but these right here are the forever helpless, poor little old victims. And we're going to get into detail with that. 
Uh, and by the way, you guys, I also want to add this before I start. I finally figured out how to pronounce the word that I've been struggling with. It's not amygdala. It's not amygdala. It's amygdala. 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 So I finally got it. Thank you guys for being so supportive. It's amygdala. So I finally got it. Thank you guys. But anyway, back to the to the to the topic at hand. Uh, so the narcissist, the narcissistic qualities of a vulnerable narcissist are masked by helplessness, emotionality, and res reticent behavior. They are not dissimilar to covert, covert or introverted narcissists, which fly under the ra radar under the grandiose radar of a typical narcissist. And so these are the ones that are very uh, dramatic. They're always sick. Poor little old me, you know, everyone is out to get me. They hate me so much. You know, people are jealous of me. Um, and we're going to go in detail with that. So they're typically highly sensitive people to the extreme level. Only their feelings have significance or importance, not others. Instead of using their sensitivities to understand and meet the needs of other people, which you would assume, uh, you know, a person with some sensitivities would do, you have to remember they're still narcissists. And so their sensitivity applies to them, not you, them. No one else feels that way. They feel that way. Um, they take offense to the slightest emotional reaction, personalize other people's feelings, and ultimately make it all about them. It's not about you. It's about them. Um, so just like the grandiose narcissist, vulnerable narcissists like to be considered a perfectionist in their area of specialty. However, the grandiose narcissist will insist that they are perfect and believe others see them that way. While vulnerable, vulnerable narcissists believe they are perfect, but others fail to see them that way. You don't see my greatness. You don't see my beauty. You fail to give me proper perspective. You don't respect me. You know, you don't understand, you know, what all I have been through to get to this point. These are the type of people that, um, as you know, you know, most narcissists, well, narcissists have been traumatized in their childhood. They have some type of childhood trauma. And remember, we talked about it on the narcissist versus borderline, that narcissist borderline, you know, there has been some type of trauma in their childhood. And so with the vulnerable narcissist, what they do is, is they take that trauma, um, you know, from childhood and they use that to play on your emotions. I've had it so bad. And see, what they don't tell you is that they're a narcissist. Obviously, they're not going to tell you that. But what they do is, is they play on your emotions by how horrible they've had it, how bad people have treated them. All my life, all my life, I had to fight. I had to fight my daddy. I had to fight my brothers. You guys know color purple. Come on. So, but all their life, they had to fight. All their life, people have been out to get them. And yes, they may have had some traumatic events, but they are forever victims and they never heal from beyond that, um, from that trauma. So they use that all the time, even when they're, you know, and we'll talk about this too. So I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but they'll even use that when they're wronging other people and people hold them accountable. They switch back to the victim mentality. Oh, you know, but look at all that I've been through. And so I know I make mistakes and everything is probably because, you know, I have been molested as a child or I have been beaten. And that's a serious topic. So those of you, I'm not being insensitive, but they take it and they play on that to, um, provoke or to manipulate other people's emotions. So they keep bringing this up. And what do people do? Oh my gosh, you're right. I'm so sorry. Uh, and they're wrong. Uh, and so let's see. Um, the vulnerable uh, narcissist is similar to the emotional ups and downs of a borderline, uh, borderline personality, but without the self-harming behavior that is characteristics of the BPDs. Uh, vulnerable narcissists might threaten to uh, harm themselves uh, as an intimidation tactic, but usually do not follow through. So they'll do it, and number one, they'll do it to divert attention to themselves and, uh, well, divert attention um, like say, for example, um, you've caught them into something, they, they have been caught, they have, uh, you know, you're holding them accountable for something. Instead of them flying into a rage, they'll turn around and divert the attention back to themselves by threatening to kill themselves, to commit suicide, I'm going to jump off of a bridge, but it's all to divert attention so that they're not held accountable for what they have done or what they are doing. 
Um, but it divert the attention because what now that they're going to commit suicide and oh my gosh and you know you the whole focus is now on how horrible and oh my gosh and and they have these emotional you know they are very emotional dramatic individuals uh, the vulnerable narcissists um, there's no healthy way to explain the emotion and sub subsequent uh, responses of a vulnerable narcissist um, as they are uh, always right they're always right they're never wrong and if you disagree it's gonna be woe is me you know, see, that's everybody does me that way. Even when the emotion is out of proportion to the event, it cannot be examined for any fault. Vulnerable narcissists are more prone to depression because the reality of their life doesn't meet the fantasy life they feel entitled to receive. They inconsistent this inconsistency might cause them to quit jobs without any regard for the consequences of the decision because the workplace does not live up to their expectation. Then they turn around and think about it, you know, People at the job, they never treat me fairly. They, they, you know, I have all these skills and they, they don't respect my skills and, and they may not have any skills at all, but they don't respect my skills. They don't, they don't, they don't respect what I know and how I do what I do. And they just don't understand our, our, uh, you know, our, uh, artistic, the artistic mind and they, they underpay me and they mistreat me every job, all 50 of the jobs you had in one month. And there's only 30 days in a month. So this is how they think. Um, let's see. Uh, the victim card is routinely, routine, routine, routinely played to justify actions that others may see as disconcerting. Typical statements include everyone is out to get me because I'm better than them or this is not my fault, but someone else's fault. And so it's a matter of people are jealous over me. Well, obviously, you know, when people have a talent and see, they make it sound so smooth that it's almost like you'll fall for it. You know, you have to think about it when people are very, very talented. And I say this too, you know, when people are very talented, sometimes people don't understand their talent. They don't understand their gifts. And a lot of times you do have people that are intimidated by that individual. And so a lot of times what they do is, and you know, in order to, <clears throat> to protect their vulnerabilities, they'll attack the person that they have giftings. They'll take that whole statement and flip it on themselves but i am talented so i understand that people you know sometimes are intimidated by you know the, the gifts and the talents that i have but i can't that's a god gift that i've given you know what am i supposed to do you know what am i supposed to do that i'm so beautiful you know what am i supposed to do that i'm gifted like that i mean gosh i mean you know i worked on it and i worked so hard on it you know it's not fair that people just don't respect me you see how they think uh let's see that fantasy person is non-existent the massive insecurity at the root of narcissism is covered with silence instead of grandiose behavior. So they may appear to be shy and quiet. Uh, in fact, they're extremely judgmental of anyone who displays pretentious, flamboyant, or lavish behaviors. And so that's why if they see a flamboyant and grandiose narcissist, two, two narcissists are not going to make it together. They're both love bombing. They both want all the attention, you know, but then you have this extreme narcissist that wants all the attention and they don't, they, they're very, they're very judgmental mental oh you know what is the problem you know you're not all that you know so you have this this type of narcissist which is that vulnerable and so another thing is um they're very very talented at using false humility and shallow apologies to get what they want so that false humility they present themselves as being very humble individuals you know i don't try to show my talent i don't try to you know i mean what am i supposed to do i try to be as humble as i possibly can because i don't want people think that i'm you know like you know, I'm arrogant or something like that. I don't want people thinking, but they're telling you <laughs> what they are. You know, I don't want people think that I'm arrogant. So I try to, you know, I don't, I, I want to stay in the background. No, they don't. They want to stay in the front ground, but you know, they, I want to stay in the background. I, I don't need to, to, to receive all the oculates. I want you to receive the oculates and don't give them the oculates if you want to and see what happens. Uh, and they're one of those passive aggressive types. They'll get you back passive aggressively. And I'll go into some details to show you what they look like. Um, let's see. However, when pressed, even they will agree that they don't mean mean it and even blame other person's weakness for having to apologize in the first place. So they apologize. They really don't mean it. They just want you to shut up. And it's really about weakness. I'm just apologizing because, you know, if I don't, this person is going to hound me. Uh, let's see. What else? Because of the complete lack of intimate relationship, vulnerable narcissists may do better online, better online relationship than face to face. So you guys be very careful. Some of these people, when you guys are going on dating sites, some of those people might be vulnerable narcissists, you know, because they're not good with the face to face interaction. They're better. They can do a lot of things online. You can be whoever you want to be online. Uh, this allows the, the vulnerable uh, narcissist to maintain illusionary, illusory, illusory or illusionary, illusory. 
an illusion relationship. There we go. As being more significant than it is. Instead of being charming like the, the, the grandiose narcissist, the vulnerable narcissist act aloft, smug, disinterested, bored, condescending, inattentive, and judgmental around others. They use this tactic to draw others in without having to engage real conversations. So don't let them fool you into thinking they're not like the grandiose counterparts. They actually have far more co in common and are very capable of uh, uh, narcissistic behavior. It's just done in a sneaky manner. So let me give you some examples. Um, you may have a vulnerable narcissist that um, plays weak and feeble. They play up on their sicknesses, um, you know, but what they'll do is, is they, like they may get people in private because they're covert. And so they may get people in private. And so what they do when they're in private, they may antagonize the person. They may, um, you know, say things under their breath. They just do little things. It may not be anything that they do. They'll just do little things, you know, uh, take food from you, take food off your plate, you know, or, I mean, just anything you can think of that is just, um, you know, that most people won't catch. And so what they do is like they poke you, poke you, poke you, poke you. And then when you finally blow up, they look like, oh my gosh, why would you treat me this way? See, everyone always treats me this way and they're so disrespectful. And then the hard thing is, is to prove that this individual has been harassing me. Well, what did they do? All they did was you take some food off of there. I didn't know it was your food. You know, you didn't say anything or no one said anything. And, you know, and oh my gosh, and see, this is why I'm so sick. And, you know, no one cares about me. And this is how everyone always treats me everyone always treats me this way or you may have um a person that um always i don't this right here just really annoys me that person always has this victimized look on their face you know just and whenever you see them whenever they see you they always have this victim look and they're always you know trying to put their head on your shoulders and, and trying to get you to, to pet them. And, and it's almost like you just want to shove them down, want to push them down on the floor. And I'm not that mean. I wouldn't push them down. But in my head, I did. You know, in my head, I push them down. So they're always the ones that's almost like a cat. They're always on you. They're always trying to draw your empathy. They're always trying to pull and manipulate your emotions to, uh, you know, to, to, so that you can feed in and you, but these are some vicious individuals because they do things behind your back. And then when they do little things behind your back, you can tell them you catch them doing wrong or they have disrespected you or whatever. And then you confront them to show them how their behavior, you're like, Oh, I know I always keep doing that. And I don't know what's wrong with me. And I, I may need counseling, you know, and I just, it's like, I can't, I don't know. I, I don't mean to be like that. And then what happens is, is when you leave them alone, they go right back to doing the exact same thing again and then you'll find yourself saying like I done told you a hundred times I keep telling you the same thing I know I know I, I know I know I'm wrong I know you're right you I know I know help me you know I'm just you know no they know exactly what they're doing they're getting fuel out of that and so you have to hold them accountable and don't play into the this sad pitiful role this victimized role and I know I know no they know they know because they don't want to comply they you telling them where they're wrong at and what they're doing wrong and you're catching them doing wrong and you're telling them where they're wrong at they want you to comply to them they want you to let them keep doing what they're doing even if it means running over you or crossing your boundaries you see what i mean you have those mothers or fathers you know and fathers do it too sometimes they come and run your house they tell you what to do in your house they tell you how to raise your kids or I raise my kids this way. You know, if you raise your kids this way and I've, I've had enough kids, so I should know, you know, or they come in your house and almost take over your house. And then when you confront them, it's like, well, you know, I'm just trying to help. That's all I ever do is try to help. And people always mistreat me. And they misunderstand and don't speak another language. You know, if they speak another language, like, we well, you know, it's the, it's the, um, the, um, the, uh, language gap, the language barrier. You've been speaking that language the English language for over 400 years. There's no possible way that you don't understand. No, what it is, is they will use any excuse. They're always the victim. They'll use any excuse. Um, when they're doing things, you know, uh, when they're doing things behind your back, um, and they're very, very, very sneaky. They're very sneaky because remember they're covert. Sorry, you guys. But uh, remember they're covert. So they do things. And when they do things, they're very sneaky behind what they're doing. And they think that no one's going to catch them. And then when you catch them, they're like cats. They'll rub up on you and, and you know, and love you. And now keep in mind, they may have just uh, uh, ghosted you. They may have like... Um, 
giving you the silent treatment, but then you catch them in something and they know that you may, you know, that they, they, they don't want you confronting them. So they'll come and all of a sudden they come and rub on you and they'll hug on you. And you know, and this could be an in intimate relationships. Uh, they'll use anything to their advantage, anything, excuse me. They'll use anything to their advantage. You can have a pimple on your forehead to them you're going to have to call, they get in trouble or they get caught doing something or they need attention, you're going to have to call 911. You're going to have to call 911 and you're going to have to get the paramedics over here because there's a pimple in the middle of their forehead. You see what I mean? And so these are the ones that are always the victims. These are always the ones playing sick, playing pitiful. And a lot of them have this pitiful look on their face. And, you know, they're always, they're always dealing with someone's empathy and woe is me and Oh my gosh, it gets to a point where it literally becomes exhausting. Um, so let me go to this one last page and just add this. This comes from Thrive Talk. And this is, who is this? Make sure I give proper credit. The author is Abby. So I know who the author is, Abby. Uh, I want to make sure I give the proper credit. But there's this little blurb in here that I wanted to read really quick. Um, it says here that vulnerable narcissistic traits. The most prominent of vulnerable narcissist trait is constant victimization mentality. They're always the victim. They're always the victim and always require sympathetic attention. That is their fuel, that sympathetic fuel. Um, and they'll dog people out. They'll talk about them behind their back. They'll smear their name. And then they'll come around you and just the same person that they're dogging out and smearing and talking about is the same person. They'll come and lay their head on their shoulders or pat their hands and tell them how wonderful they are. And, and you're thinking like, you just dog me out like a dog, you know, but they pretend like nothing ever happened and it can't possibly be true. These are the ones that, you know, they'll dog you out and the next minute is, oh, you are so mean and you confront them about it and then you are such a mean individual and I can't believe you would treat me like that. Why would I do something like that to you? Narcissists, they need that sympathetic feel. Uh, they're, they are emotionally draining to be around. Just like a borderline, they, they have very similar traits to borderlines. Uh, but they are mostly draining. They 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 need that emotional fuel. Um, let's see. Most because of how sensitive they are on top of being emotionally demanding. Um, let's see. Uh, their mission in life is to get people around them to see them as perfect creatures that they are. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. What else is a little blurb here? Let's see. Uh, Vulnerable narcissists mostly appear introverted and calm, but emotional regulation can still be difficult for the confusing esteem issues they have. Uh, the first line of narcissistic defenses includes being passive aggressive and shutting people out to punish them. See, very similar to borderline. Uh, they will always play the victim card because they will see they will always see themselves as the victim regardless of the circumstances. So they can be in the total wrong, but they're still the victim. And you're like, are you serious? Um, let's see. Um, unlike vulnerable narcissists, grandiose narcissists are very, okay, we already did the aggressive, not the grandiose, we were talking about the vulnerable. So hopefully this helped you. So now uh, with the verbiage, I know that the vulnerable narcissist is basically a covert narcissist that plays the victim all the time. It's one of those that are always forever the victim and they use the victim card to manipulate people around them to get what they want. And so these are the ones that will emotionally drain you. These are the ones that will, um, you know, they, 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 they use their age. They use any kind of disability. They use any kind of sickness. They'll use anything, anything to play the victim and to divert your attention when you have to put them in check. You know, basically when you, when you, uh, have to correct them and put the responsibility back on. They'll divert all the tension to I'm going to kill myself because no one cares about me. And so it's almost like this was the issue. And then you're way over here in a whole nother field talking about something totally different because they're always the victim. So it's always a diversion to get you to focus on them. So that is the vulnerable narcissist. So hopefully that answered the question. So now that we all have the knowledge, you know, the first one I heard the word vulnerable, I'm like vulnerable, we mean they're vulnerable, you know, we're vulnerable, you know, so 
And now you have it. So hopefully this has helped. Hopefully I answered that question. Um, someone asked me just to talk about it. They didn't ask you the question about it. They just asked me to elaborate and talk about it some. So that is the Vulnerable Narcissist. Hopefully this has helped you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the bell so you know whenever I upload, I'll be back on Sunday live between 8 and 9 Pacific Standard Time. So all of you that are new subscribers, please come and join me. Come talk to me on Sunday. I'm open. I open it up for whatever you want to ask me and whatever you want to talk about concerning narcissism. And also I have a Facebook page, Psychological Health Consultants and Services. I am a life coach. I am a licensed mental health counselor in the state of Washington, which is limited to the state of Washington. And I'm also a uh, trauma professional. Please stay tuned. My book should be coming out soon. When my book comes out, I'm ready to hold it so I can show you guys the book. So hopefully by May, my book will be finished and ready for sale. It is with the editor now. And thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are the greatest group, the greatest tribe, YouTube people that I have the honor and the pleasure to work with, to teach, to bring awareness to. You guys have an awesome weekend. Go do something nice for yourself and go and be great.